we hear in our scriptures today a call to something beyond mere legalism. That is, the Lord is asking us a complete and total dedication of our hearts. We heard that, of course, in the first reading of loving God, being sure to observe these commandments with all one's heart and with all one's soul. That is a complete and total commitment. And sometimes we can think that what God was trying to say in the Old Testament was this, that if you do X, Y, Z, he will then do A, B, C. And that would be um, commerce. That wouldn't be love. That would be trying to manipulate God. And it would be a relationship not with a God who first blesses, but with a God who basically picks favorites, whoever can do the best. That's not the God of Israel. It's not the God of the Old Testament. The God of the Old Testament is one who first came to the aid of a people who were not seeking him. He is the one who liberated them and brought them out despite their not having been necessarily worthy of it. He brought them from Egypt. He sustained them in the desert. He then gave himself to them. He gave them his name so they could call him by his first name. Imagine calling God by his first name. And then Jesus comes to reveal that God wants us to go deeper than just knowing his first name. He wants us to actually enter into a relationship with God, the same that Jesus has. That is, the relationship of Children to a father and father to a children. We see that God, being so good and gracious, has sent Jesus. He's, he died for us, all of us, on the cross, that the good and the bad alike might, found, might find salvation in Jesus Christ. And so that's why we know, brothers and sisters, that no one is good enough to go to heaven. We never say that somebody was, able, was such a good person that they should go to heaven. It's not the reason why people go to heaven. People go to heaven because they believe in the mercy of Jesus Christ and have received his forgiveness for their sins. People go to heaven because Jesus is the one who makes us worthy. Because he's the one who pours out his his blessings upon the good and the bad alike and allows us, all of us, good and bad alike, to say yes or no to receiving his grace. So if out of pride we think it's our own goodness that gets us into heaven, we can actually say no to the mercy of Jesus who might be trying to say, no, well, let me just forgive you. Jesus then turns around and basically says, if this is how much you are loved by, by God, my Father, if you, this is how much you're loved by me, not because you've done everything right, but just simply because I'm giving myself to you, then, and only then, after receiving that unmerited free gift of love is God then asking us to allow that love to change our hearts in such a way that we begin to imitate the one who has loved us. In other words, God says basically, since I love you not because you deserved it, I'm asking you to love others not because they deserve it. Not because they were good to you. Many times, of course, when it comes to certain relationships that we see in society today, we can see that sometimes husbands and wives have a tug-of-war relationship rather than a mutual gift relationship. Where they're, they're the ones trying to get from each other as much as possible instead of being rooted in the Lord, whereby they receive from God each and then are able to give to each other. Able to sacrifice for the other when the other isn't able necessarily to able to return. For instance, in times of illness or just in times of 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 difficulty, whatever may be going on, we see in that a true reflection of what it means to love as Jesus has called us to. The same thing when it comes to children when they're first born. Of course, one doesn't love them because of the fact that. They're able to love one back, right? One loves just simply out of the goodness of one's own heart for that child. Just wanting to bless that child. And that is the love that God 
not only has for us, but he's asking us to extend it. So for instance, to love the people who would want our ill. To love people who maybe are caught up in ideology and and terrorist thinking. People who don't hold our same opinions. To pray for them and to want and to beg God for the grace that they come to know God. That they come to, to be converted in their hearts away from any evil. That they come specifically to know the truth about Jesus Christ. So today we ask the Lord specifically for the grace that as we encounter his love, his unconditional and amazing and infinite love in this Eucharist, because once again he's going to give himself to us body and blood, soul and divinity, not holding anything back, That he might give us the grace to so completely receive that, not with an idea that we have to first deserve it, but with the idea that his love changes us. We then ask the Lord to make his love in us fruitful. We ask that through this reception of communion today at this very Mass that we may be given the fruit of charity, which is one of the fruits of the Holy Spirit. It's only possible with the Holy Spirit himself in order for us to love the way God does. So the good news that we have is this, that the very love that God is looking for from us, he's also willing to work in us. We, on the other hand, just simply need to say yes. So today we ask the Lord for the grace to say yes. And to give ourselves completely to the one who's giving himself completely to us today.